worship service with First Church and South Church, our UCC Grammy gathering. Uh, special day today, we have our pop-up pageant. Uh, hopefully you all have your scripts and costumes ready. I'm the innkeeper. Um, I'm Reverend Dr. Sandra Fisher, and I, along with my colleague, uh, Pastor Todd from First Church, are going to be with you this morning. Uh, Reverend Denny Moon is hopefully still in bed. It's his 50th anniversary with Sally. If you're watching, oh you too, happy anniversary. And of course, welcome to everyone who is watching online. Um, announcements for me this morning. We, uh, because of COVID, we are asking people to fill out these forms. If you'd be so kind as to look in the pew, there's a, uh, a clipboard and it will allow us to do contact tracing if unfortunately that might be necessary. Um, also, coffee hour now is um, without food. We're keeping our masks on. You are welcome to uh, socialize, I suppose, here in the sanctuary afterwards. Um, just, you know, be good about all those social distancing and masking uh, protocols that we've all become so accustomed to. Let's see. My other... Uh, Sarah, you have an announcement, yes? Hello, I just have one announcement uh, for the South Church folks. We have uh, extra stars available for our Star Sunday um, that we had uh, a couple weeks ago. So if you need a star or an inspiration for the next few weeks, you can grab a star. They're back there in baskets, or um, you can come and grab one from the office during the week. Yes, so we are uh, joining First Church in the tradition of a Star Sunday, but uh, they got their star last January. We got ours last week. So if, <laughs> if you need your 2021 uh, star, please pick it up and uh, we'll meditate on that for the next few weeks and then come back together uh, the first Sunday of January and uh, talk about how they inspired us and they get our 2022 stars. Uh, Todd. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Pastor Todd. Uh, it's such an honor and a joy to be celebrating this fourth Sunday of Advent with you. Um, a few um, opportunities coming up. Um, Friday, December 24, Christmas Eve, we have uh, two, uh, two services, two churches, one Christmas uh, together. And uh, the first a service, Christmas Eve service, will be at 5 p.m. and will be outdoors and will be here at South Church, uh, behind the church. And uh, I'm really looking forward to that service. I understand it was a lovely, well-attended service last year, and so I'm looking forward to find out. I, I hear there's a bonfire there's involved. There's bonfire, and, there's luminaries, it's yeah. very beautiful. So, Storytelling, you know. All yeah, things. it'll be great. And then at 8 p.m., there will be uh, an indoor service at First Church. And there is a registration for that. It would be very helpful. We're going to um, encourage everyone to uh, register beforehand, just so we have an idea, uh, again, for the physical distancing and all of that. Um, we want to make sure we can get everyone safely into the meeting house for that service at 8 p.m. And then on December 26th, that is the Sunday uh, following uh, Christmas, the next day, there will be a, um, Denny called it a jamming and jammies service. Of course he did. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's catchy. Uh, it's, uh, at, uh, once again, at First Church. And it will be in our cook hall, and it will be an informal service of singing and storytelling and uh, you uh, if you would like to can come in appropriate jammy wear so that will make it <laughs> fun as well um, and then of course january 2 as um, as uh, reverend sandra was saying is our star sunday great Thank you. That's a lot of exciting things happening in the next few weeks together. All right, if we will take a moment now, as is our tradition here at South Church, and place your hand on your heart, calming your nervous system a bit, and take three deep breaths with me as we 
come together. Let us prepare to worship God. May this light burn bright as a reminder that God, who is love, is here. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Maybe we'll come up and meet the baby and 
I don't know, maybe cohorts or pods, I don't know what's safe, but uh, has everybody arrived safely? Yes? Okay, well then let us begin. We'll, we'll, we'll get the most important people up here. We'll get a chair out. Um, Mary, Joseph, are you here? Mary and Joseph, why don't you come here and, and rest your weary feet? Do we have Mary and Joseph and the baby? Baby G. Oh, yes, here we are. Okay. <laughs> Sit down, Mary. You have traveled so far. Sit down. Oh, thank you for this. We walked so long, so far. Many, many miles. Yes, dear. <laughs> he started in Nazareth. We traveled to Bethlehem, didn't we, Joseph? Yes, dear. <laughs> After walking so far, we needed a safe place to stay, to rest. I was about to have a baby. There were no places to stay, though. We checked with so many people. We asked for a room at the inn, didn't we, Joseph? Yes, dear. <laughs> we were told by the innkeeper there was no room, no vacancy. He said that we could stay in the barn out back. I had the baby in a manger. Isn't that right, Joseph? That's here. <laughs> there were animals all around. It was the most unusual experience. There were sheep and camels and cows and donkeys. No deer. <laughs> birth story, a baby in a manger. That would make a lovely song.
Oh, one, two, three, perfect. Perfect. King number one, king number two, and king number three. King number one, why don't you speak in the microphone over there? We traveled far. We saw the brightest, most beautiful star in the sky. We knew we had to follow the star, but the star would lead us to the new king. We brought with us gifts. We have gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Once again. We brought with us gifts. We have gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And a casserole. It's from the missus. <laughs> Jesus had visitors and they brought gifts. How great. In a casserole. Nice. Three kings came to visit.
Angels, do you have anything to say? <laughs> Follow the star. Follow the star. Wow. Glory to the newborn king.
Matlock from First Church, serving as your deacon this morning. I, I'd love to say that I love the creativity and enthusiasm of a pop-up pageant. So, good for all of them, for that effort. Our scripture this morning is from 1 Luke, verses 26 through 38. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since the Holy Spirit, how can this be, since, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, excuse me, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative, Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of God shall stand forever. Well, that was joyous. <laughs> uh, we come together now as a family of faith to share our joys and our concerns. What is on your heart this morning, my friends? Yes. Prayers for strength and, and uh, understanding as the Seltzer family deals with a number of different health issues with a number of different family members. Thanks, John. For the Seltzer family as they uh, deal with family issues, prayers for strength and understanding. Andrew. And the tornadoes in Kentucky? Yes. Prayers, prayers for all those who are suffering in the aftermath of the uh, weather events in Kentucky. Linda. Continue prayers for Linda's granddaughter. Charlene. Happy birthday, Christmas, Christmas gift extraordinaire, Alex, Bobby. It's not only uh, Dennis' 50th anniversary, it's my birthday. Oh. Oh. <laughs> we can do something about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yesterday was, I won't say the number, but yesterday was Reedy Johnson's birthday. Oh, Reedy's too. Happy yeah. birthday to Reedy. Uh, there she is. <laughs> number 90. 
beautiful. Thank you, Belfire, and thank you, uh, Sarah, and all who um, participated in the fun Christmas pageant. Um, it's good to share the Christmas spirit of joy and love together and sharing the story, the old, old story that brings us together. In the first uh, 10 years of my life, my family moved nine times. We followed my dad as we moved, uh, you know, as he moved from job to job, first in Michigan and then in Florida and then back in Michigan again. And so by the time I started first grade, I had attended three different elementary schools. Um, and I remember my first day in first grade at Jenison Christian School. My teacher, Ms. Postma, assigned a classmate, Mike, to stay with me the whole day. That was his job. And he showed me where my desk was and how the different learning stations in my classroom worked. And uh, he took me around the playground at recess time and introduced me to classmates. I don't remember the names of any of my other first grade classmates. But I will never forget Mike. And who, who showed me that I was not alone. And I will never forget the teacher, Ms. Posima, who out of her great compassion and wisdom connected us. Loneliness, isolation. Um, I hope you haven't experienced those things. But my guess is that not a few of you have. I certainly have. And it is incredibly painful. And in fact, uh, you know, there's new scientific research that it, it actually has measurable uh, adverse health outcomes uh, for people who find themselves in that situation. By contrast, there is nothing more powerful than knowing that we are not alone. Our theme for the fourth Sunday of Advent is those who dream are not alone. It's a variation of our overall theme for the season, those who dream change everything. And one of the, way, one of, it, it, one of the ways that, that we change everything is by living out of this truth that we are not alone living out of that reality that the Christmas story uh, shows us. This child, Jesus, called Emmanuel, which literally means God with us, which literally means we are never alone. But sometimes we lose sight of that. It's not enough just to know in our heads, oh yeah, there's this thing that was said in church one time that I heard. Or there was this thing that I read in the Bible, these nice words. For me, in any case, that isn't enough. I need to know, I need to feel, I need to experience that I am not alone. And the way that that works for me is when I am and others are uh, embodying that togetherness that God promises. Alone, how much can any one of us come accomplish? There are so many difficulties in the world. There is so uh, much pain and hurt, so many challenges that we face. 
alone, that's not going to change much. But together, that is why, uh, that is how um, living out of that truth that we are not alone changes everything. First Church and South Church have been dreaming about the possibility of a future together, even more together than we have been. In a worship service uh, earlier uh, in this process, we gathered in small groups to ask the question, what might we do together that we couldn't do apart? And a lot of wonderful things were said. A summary, I would say, is that we will be able to create a church that is more alive, that doesn't just mouth the words of love, but rather we will embody, and in this process, we are embodying the God of love by building new and loving relationships. Though difficult and messy at times, there is a joyous energy in coming together because I think the reason why that energy is because we're doing what God is calling us to do. We're actually not just thinking about Christianity, we are doing Christianity. And that is where the energy and life in this uh, faith of ours comes from. We are literally bringing God into the world. Our scripture today tells us that the angel Gabriel approached Mary and asked, in essence, will you partner with the Holy Spirit in bringing God into the world? And Mary, of course, said yes. And that change the whole history of the world. That is why those who dream change everything, just by saying yes to bringing God into the world. Through this time of transition, First Church and South Church have been saying yes. Our scripture tells us that when we say yes to God, uh, well, in, in our case, one, one of the implications of that, uh, of saying yes, is um, one of the implications for us as churches is that we shift from a mindset of preserving history to the work of actually making history, right? This is historic work, what we're doing right now, just as it changes everything. What each of us can accomplish on our own is limited. Together, the possibilities are, are endless. A few months after my wife, Nicole, became pregnant with our first child, Fiona, we noticed that her belly had a strange kind of asymmetrical shape to it. We went to Women and Infants Hospital in, in Chicago, University of Chicago, and we found out that she had a cyst growing on her ovary that the pregnancy had, you know, the hormones had caused to grow. And it was putting the lives of both mother and baby in danger. So long story short, the doctors successfully performed a high-risk surgery uh, to remove the cyst. And after that, Nicole was con confined to many weeks of bed rest. When the time came to deliver, Nicole was in labor for 36 hours. <laughs> yeah, I'm laughing. <laughs> it was not funny. <laughs> uh, it was quite a thing. 
but I'll never forget the moment in the delivery room when I first laid eyes on our beautiful baby daughter. The OBGYN held up Fiona and I heard her tiny cry. And then Nicole turned to me and said, that was the worst experience in my life. <laughs> That is a true story. <laughs> Being the church is a labor of love. Uh, when Mary said yes uh, to God, she was not only saying uh, yes to the joy of motherhood. She was saying yes to the pain of labor. And I invite us to consider that the same is true for us as Christians. This thing that First Church and South Church is doing is it's our baby, it's your baby. Mm -hmm. As the members of First Church, this is your baby. That also means it's your labor. And so if it feels painful and uncomfortable at times, it may help just to know that that's part of what we have said yes to in bringing this new life into the world. But not having any personal experience with giving birth <laughs> myself, what I have noticed is that eventually the, the pain goes away. Maybe not the memory of the pain, but the pain itself. The love, however, remains. It's said that people may not remember the words you say. They will remember, however, how you make them feel. I can't remember a thing uh, Mike said to me, as he showed me around the classroom, I don't really remember any particular lesson that Ms. Posma taught me in first grade. Uh, but I do remember that moment when I felt that I was not alone. The promise of Christianity is not a life without difficulty. In fact, the labor of love we are invited to is pretty much guaranteed to be accompanied by a certain amount of discomfort. The promise is that in this discomfort, we are not alone. God is with us. And while discomfort comes and goes, as Paul, the Apostle Paul famously said, uh, these three remain faith, hope, and love. And the greatest is love. Let us uh, stand and sing. Or come all you can.
There are a thousand ways to live into our commitment to these communities, as our benediction reminds us. If you're able to make a donation, there's a collection plate when you leave the sanctuary. If you are not, your presence here is a gift in and of itself. Thank you for being part of us today. Please join us in the benediction. Go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God. Rejoicing through the power of the Holy Spirit. The grace of Jesus Christ. The love of God. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.